Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining. Kerry Brees, CEO and co-founder of NowRx. And we've got uh, our other co-founder, Sumit Shokand, who is also uh, CTO and president. So we have exciting uh, talk we want to do today. We're doing something a little bit different. We're going to focus on technology. So instead of throwing up uh, a bunch of slides and, and me talking about the business, um, we are going to focus on Sumit and the technology side and answer a bunch of questions that everyone may or may not have. Uh, we will do a you know, more traditional webinar probably in another week or two where it'll be uh, back to the old format, sort of talking about the business itself. Um, the reason uh, technology is so important in, in what we're attempting to do here at NowRx uh, is because of the vision we have for the company and what we're how we're trying to transform uh, the way prescriptions are managed and the way healthcare is really affected in the United States. Uh, a lot of people I find, you know, don't think a lot about technology when they're standing in line at a pharmacy. Um, and a lot of people, when they first hear about the NowRx concept about, you know, free same day delivery pharmacy, they sort of have a vision that, you know, it's just taking a normal pharmacy and adding delivery to it. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, everything that we bring to bear and the advantages we have in the marketplace have to do with what we do inside the pharmacy, uh, the, the pharmacy technology that we've built that makes the operation uh, and the processing of prescriptions uh, and the communication with doctors and insurance companies, all of that uh, well before we even get to a point where we can deliver a prescription. Uh, and there's even another aspect to it that goes beyond even pharmacy into just better patient outcomes. So what we've built and what you're going to hear about today is our, our pharmacy management system. You can think of that like an ERP system. It's it's like an Oracle ERP system, but for pharmacy. It manages everything that goes on in a pharmacy. Inventory management, receipt of prescriptions electronically from doctors, communication with those doctors about those prescriptions and refill authorizations, communication with insurance companies and adjudicating claims with those insurance companies about prescription medications. Uh, all of that is housed in a pharmacy management system. Now, a lot of people have gone after the pharmacy business uh, with an eye towards using pharmacy management systems that already exist. These software programs exist at CVS, at Walgreens. There's uh, several vendors that sell pharmacy management software uh, to anybody who wants it, frankly. If you're a pharmacy, you can get a, a pharmacy management system. We looked at all those systems. Uh, Sumit did a deep dive back in 2015 uh, and realized that to try to do what we want to do in perfecting not just the customer experience, but also uh, from a patient health perspective, that we needed to rebuild uh, a pharmacy management system from scratch using modern technology and mo modern uh, systems and software in place. Uh, we also deploy a lot of robotics that go on top of the software, uh, robotic dispensing, uh, and it's all connected into one system. And we have uh, obviously a consumer app that connects to our pharmacy management system. Uh, we have a driver side app. We have something called uh, Physician Quick Connect, which connects right to the doctor. So uh, I'll just give you one stat and I'm gonna stop talking pretty soon and uh, turn it over to me. But uh, you know, 35% of the US adults have had a prescription denied by their insurance company in the last year. 35% of three, you know, I don't know how many hundred million adults there are, but there's a lot. 35% uh, is a big number. On top of that, uh, you know, inventory issues and out of stock uh, cause another 30% of prescriptions to not get filled the same day. So if your vision of a free same day delivery digital pharmacy is just taking a normal pharmacy with legacy software and adding delivery to it, you're going to have a situation where patients are going to come in, you're going to get prescriptions uh, from doctors, and they're not going to get covered by insurance uh, in a large percentage of the time. If you haven't gotten your prescription covered by insurance, it does not matter if you deliver or not. 
you're not going to get that prescription to that patient that day. You cannot offer same day delivery or let alone a few hour delivery. So you have to solve, how do you get prescriptions covered seamlessly with insurance plans? That's number one. Number two, if you're out of a medication because you didn't manage your inventory, you cannot give that medication to a patient same day delivery. Even if you have a hundred million delivery personnel, you are not going to get that prescription to that patient that day. So you have to manage your inventory and you have to do it really well and you have to do better than the industry. If your doctor send a prescription and it wasn't internally consistent, maybe the doctor wrote a prescription for take this once a day uh, for a month and they wrote a prescription for 60, quantity 60. Well, that makes no sense if I'm only taking it once a day for 30 days. And so uh, you have to resolve that. If the doctor didn't authorize a refill in time because they need more information or they weren't looking at their queue and the pharmacy didn't follow up in a systematic way, you are not going to get that prescription today. So we have a saying in NowRx, you cannot fix the problems with pharmacy by just adding delivery. You have to fix what's going on inside the pharmacy. And that's what our quick fill system does. On top of that, if you look at even a higher level, there's a collaboration between physician, pharmacist, and patient that is critical to transforming the way patient care is done in the United States. And if you can do that right, you can make sure patients are getting their medications. You can make sure insurance companies uh, are getting the information they need to, to pay for those medications on time. You make sure physicians are getting a real-time view of whether that medication that they wrote for that patient was covered by an insurance plan or not, whether there were delays, whether we need to do a substitute medication, whether was it ever delivered, did the patient turn it down uh, because it was too expensive um, or there was some other side effect. All of that medication management and coordination between pharmacist and physician and patient is absolutely vital. And what you can do if you do it well with proper software systems and proper uh, exposing of valuable information in real time between that, that triangle, physician, pharmacist, and patient, you can produce better patient health outcomes and save insurance company, health insurance companies at large, uh, billions of dollars. There's a $290 billion problem in the United States called medication non-adherence, where patients end up in the hospital called an avoidable hospitalization due to them not getting or taking the medication that their doctor prescribed. It's a $290 billion problem every year. These are hospitalizations, right? So this goes way beyond just prescription medications. This is now hitting the health insurance system uh, at its core. And so that's all what we're doing here at NowRx. This is much bigger than uh, delivering a prescription from you know, a regular pharmacy, CVS or something. We're transforming the way medications are distributed, prescribed, managed, the way it affects patient uh, care and health outcomes, uh, saving money for insurance companies, saving time and effort for physicians, uh, making a better environment for pharmacists, uh, in addition to having just a pristine customer ex experience for patients. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Sumit, and uh, we'll shut down. We'll have plenty of time to do questions. We're going to show you a little bit of the technology. We're not going to show everyone everything because these calls are recorded, and uh, it's a competitive space. So uh, we'll talk through everything and uh, answer as many questions as we can. Go ahead, Sumit. Cool. Uh, thanks for the handover. Uh, I'll continue in the in the spirit that Kerry was talking about. I wanted some some ground rules about what we, what I can or want to show, and you know how fair can I be in the answers. Uh, I'll uh, cover how we think about the business. Uh, we'll cover how operations and tech goes hand in hand. This is not a pure tech company. This is not a pure operations company. And it's, you know, they have to go hand in hand. So I'll try to walk a fine line between trying to talk about our tech and show, but not in enough detail to give things away to competitors, right? So for sure, you'll hear me sometime today say, you know, we, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, just setting some ground rules on what what you can expect. Uh, I'll try to be as transparent as possible without stuffing over the line, right? So let's get started with that. I uh, hope that's okay. At a high level, uh, 
people usually don't understand how a prescription gets to the pharmacy and then how do they get it? What are the steps involved in this stuff? Uh, typically, traditionally, prescriptions were written on a piece of paper and you would carry it to the pharmacy. But today it's written electronically. Most of them, more, more and more states are going electronic only. Uh, there is a company called Surescripts. Most people never heard of it. This is the single company in the whole country. Every electronic prescription goes from doctor's EMR to Surescript, from Surescript to the pharmacy of choice, right? So to get into the game, uh, you need integration against Surescript. I'll talk more about that. What does that mean? Once a prescription is at the pharmacy, um, some 95% of the people uh, pay for their prescription through insurance. They only pay the copay. Insurance pays for the bulk of the price. And so you need to electronically run a transaction against insurance systems. And there are many insurance companies, PBMs, uh, three large ones, but tens of others. And so you need an ability to run an electronic transaction against these guys, you know, whatever the PBM or the customer is, and get a response back, which could be acceptance or denial, or you know, there are other various error conditions. And then you need to have the right drug in the right quantity in stock. Because if you don't have it, you can't give it to the customer, right? Uh, and so there is a string of things going on behind the scenes, which is not apparent to a customer when they walk into a pharmacy. Now, there are existing industry systems which do all of these, right? And we chose to write our own. And in, there are reasons for doing it, and I'll cover some of them. The way we think about it is the operation has to be completely controlled by us. Everything from receipt to insurance transactions, to inventory, to communication with customers, drivers, delivery, everything uh, we want to control because every handoff between processes, people slash software is an opportunity for error. Something drops through the cracks. Nobody knows I gave it to that system. That system had an error, never told me, right? Stuff like that. And in pharmacy, uh, a single bad handoff or dropped ball will alienate a customer forever and potentially the doctor who's coming from, because they're gonna go back and complain. This could be a life-saving drug or a health condition where they can't miss a dose. So it is a near, has to be a near perfect experience. And it is very hard to do this near perfect experience. That's why you see what you see at other retail chain stores. Their, their systems are not tracking things end to end and precisely and accurately all the way. They don't know where a certain drugs can, what is the state of this prescription, right? So that's what we look, the way we have thought about the business is we need full control over end to end. It all should be ours. Of course, we depend on some services and integrations, we'll do that. But in the end, the driving software has to be ours. And that's the only way we can manage and maintain control over the whole process, right? That's what's going on at the high level uh, at the pharmacy. Uh, Kerry mentioned, of course, now systems exist where a pharmacy can receive prescription, run it through insurance, uh, manage inventory as well to some degree, and then you give it to the customer. For a delivery pharmacy though, the stakes are higher still. If you're going to a regular pharmacy and you didn't make it in time and they close at 5 p.m., that's your problem, right? For a delivery pharmacy, when we say we'll deliver something to you, we're taking on the responsibility of making sure you get that thing, right? So it's not just true, just delivery, just go and do it because every failed delivery or every failed promise is going to cause you issues. So we have, to handle that, we do a lot of communication upfront with the customer. We got your prescription. Here's the copay. Are you okay with the copay? Right? Uh, when would you like delivery? Uh, you want it now, tomorrow, you know, whatever. So all this communication is done up front so that when it runs through, it has a successful outcome at the end. So we bolt on a lot of communication on the front of the pharmacy operations and delivery and monitoring on the backside. And that's what makes a delivery pharmacy. And you need to maintain and manage all of it. If you're depending on delivery systems of someone else, or you're not fully integrated uh, your communication with customers into your pharmacy management system, 
we have we have seen cases where there is a communication system but it's handled by a separate team then they communicate internally to the pharmacy team and there's drop off in communication issues right so just that's the way to think about the business everything has to be controlled end to end in a single point and one of the phrases uh, enterprise system uses single pane of glass you need to have a single pane of glass for your entire operations anybody should be able to go anywhere and take a look and get the latest right uh, the other side is a pharmacy is a complicated business because it's basically a delicate dance between four parties there's a doctor writing a prescription for the customer insurance is going to pay for it and we have to manage this communication in the middle so breakdown on any one of those uh, causes an issue so we have clear communication with our customers they can talk to us over text phone app whatever whatever they like uh, we have a mode of direct com two modes of direct communication to doctors electronic one from within quickfill and we have another product which is a portal for the doctors to talk directly to us of course they can also call and fax and for insurance companies it's typically the uh, third part the electronic trans uh, insurance processing that I already mentioned. So QuickFill is a unified communication layer for the customer, any channel you want, app, text, phone, uh, communication with physician, communication with insurance in an intelligent fashion. There is some intelligence needed there or sophistication needed there. Uh, you know, it's a bunch of codes and if this, then that code. Uh, but with complicated rules, so we have that. Uh, literally, our entire insurance processing is hidden behind a single button. Now, that button, a single API, which is invoked by a button. Now, that API, that button can be clicked inside the pharmacy by our people, who are a little more trained on handling an error condition and may have better outcomes. Uh, or has been exposed to the customers as well. From our mobile app, they can click the button. In fact, it does the same thing. But if it's a failure case, then we support them. Uh, and then we have logistics. I'll give you a short view of QuickFill. I'm not going to go to every piece. I'm just going to try to show you the communication part and then the dispatch part, right? Uh, Sure. This is uh, QuickFill. I'm looking at our receiving tab where we receive information. This is inbound information. These are texts, could be voicemails. Voicemails and phone calls are fully recorded, transcribed, automatically attached to profiles. So you can go back and see what goes on or what went on with a certain case. These are e-scripts. Now I'm showing you a live view. This is the live system. I put it in a demo mode, which basically scrambles the customer name, address, and phone details. That's why it's all, you know, looks funky. Other than that, this is a live system. Uh, we're looking at Mountain View. I am in Orange County today, and I can go and switch and take a look at whatever's going on in any given location from here. This kind of capability also allows us to, you know, move people dynamically. Somebody sitting in Irvine can help somebody in Mountain View if Mountain View is under load, right? So now I'll just switch to Irvine. I can see what's going on here. Uh, this ability allows us to use our people as efficiently as possible. Uh, you can see faxes. I'm not going to switch because they can't be encrypted. Uh, you have uploads. People can upload stuff from their uh, phones and some other stuff. Uh, once communication happens, they these these steps on the left hand side are various things that's going on in the pharmacy we're going these are being worked on this is being produced these have been produced and have to be verified by a pharmacist this is they have been verified by a pharmacist and now can go out is ready to go out we allow our customers to choose any window they like. We don't enforce a window on them. They can tell us anytime today is fine. They can tell us, I want it after 3 p.m. I want it after 4 p.m. Uh, you know, 
whatever. So they can tell us, and based on that, we will plan and send out routes. Here's a route. Uh, this is live. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna view it. I'm not gonna change it. Here's a live route. Would say it's going to be 20 stops. We have to go to 20 of these have been plotted and 20 stops. We think we're going to make it in three hours and for a total travel uh, distance of 40 minutes. When it has, and this has already been assigned, so I'm not going to reassign it to a driver. When it is assigned, our customers get notification that their medication are, out of, are on the way with an ETA. We give them an ETA of half an hour. And so I'm going to be predicting that I'm going to this 20, going to reach this 20th address, the last address with a precision of 30 minutes, right? And 99% of the time we hit that, of course, traffic condition is something out of our control. We can't really manage something happening on the road. When it's on the road, this is a live view of what's going on right now. The three live routes active. I was showing you one which is not active. We will get on soon. There are three live routes. This is our mountain view facility. From here, a driver has gone out that far and is making their way back. Now, here's a good cluster. Once they get into a neighborhood, they're going to drop off a whole bunch of these one after the other. And this is the power of the business. More we grow, this cluster gets denser, the driver can get there faster and faster. Uh, this is the driver's name. That's why it's showing up here. If I was to look at this driver here in blue, Jose has just delivered number eight and is about to deliver number nine. And it must be the same house because you've got number nine and 10 right over on top of each other. Uh, when Jose delivers to this patient, it will immediately go green. Effectively, this is just for dispatch to track, but the system knows it's been delivered. You could go in and check how the delivery was made. If I go into number eight and I look at their drug, I know it was dropped off at, uh, at their doorstep. And a photo of it is also uh, texted back to the customer so they can see where we left it if that is what they had instructed us to do. Uh, I'm going to stop for a second. Right. Uh, we, of course, monitor our systems and not, not the engineering system. They're monitored, of course. Operations is monitored very, very closely. I'm going to show you another dashboard on how we track things. And that one. This is operations. We know how many prescriptions in a given month. We know dispatch metrics. How many stops do we make in an hour? And how many prescriptions are in that, each one? I can drill down and say, show me what's going on in Mountain View, which is what we're looking at. It shows, historically, we were doing, density was low. We were doing something like five, prescription and R were dropped off. And we improved, improved, improved. We're doing eight, nine prescriptions an hour per driver, right? Per a driver goes out for an hour, how many prescriptions do they drop off? And there are better days. Uh, the reasons for that and uh, weekends and stuff are lower because it's not enough volume. We know how our drivers are doing. Driver efficiency is we thought this route that we assigned to driver A is going to take two hours. Did they do it in two hours? Did they do it in four hours? So if they did it in two hours, their efficiency is 100%. So we, man we monitor our driver efficiency, uh, how efficient are our drivers. And of course, it's available at a granular, much more uh, third driver level as well. So we can use it as training. Uh, utilization. Is the driver on the road? How, you know, how much time on the clock are they out on the road and how much are they sitting in-house waiting for stuff to be ready? Our target is about 80%. When it falls below 80%, that means we have excess capacity. If it goes above 80%, it typically means we're running shorter drivers. Volume is caught up and we need to hire more drivers. 
because greater than 80% is unsustainable or unexpected, right? So we have complete monitoring of what our techs are doing. How much work does a given tech do in a week? How many errors do they make? How many phone calls in and out did we make? This is a sort of a proxy, one of the proxies for business growth. How are our pharmacists doing? Uh, it's a complete track of what is going on in our business. Now, all of this, what I showed you, data, quick fill, all this data, these metrics are pulled out of quick fill. Quick fill generates all this, right? So quick fill tracks on a microsecond level. I mean, it's basically, that's what the database resolution is, but it tracks everything that everybody does in the system. Uh, so hence, we can always look back and there's a historical view in the data warehouse and everything. We can do triage. Uh, we can do root cause analysis. Some event have some customer issue happened. When did it come in? Who handled it first? What did they say or do or not do? So what's the training, right? Stuff like that. So continuous improvement of the team. The software is in a support role of operations a lot of the times. And to be able to support and make operations better and more efficient, you need a bunch of this stuff. Now, uh, some general uh, comments about how QuickFill is built. It's all API driven, custom workflow rules, hosted in AWS, uh, proper redundancies, uh, hosted in one region and uh, back up in across the country. Uh, we have not exposed QuickFill's APIs to an external party till date. But our telehealth platform uses it. So telehealth and QuickFill, they talk to each other over this API. So we know it's robust and it works fine. Uh, we just made a deliberate decision not to expose it just yet uh, because we think there's competitive advantage in keeping it to ourselves for the moment, right? Uh, speed, because now I control, I know electronically a, receipt came, a prescription came in and I know which customer it belongs to and what insurance they have. We have the ability to automatically, truly, without hands on, nobody touching it, we have the ability to move a prescription from receipt to insurance processing, filling through a robot, if it can be filled by a robot, you know, uh, some can't be, but if it can be filled by a robot, and move it to a pharmacist for verification within a minute, hands off, we have that ability. And some of the prescriptions do go down like that, right? Uh, but some don't, and we're trying to uh, judiciously decide which one we should do in this fashion and which ones we shouldn't. Uh, scalability, the way the system is built, uh, I, our system would handle the entire workload of US pharmacies everywhere, all pharmacies, without breaking a sweat. They will scale as we need. It's built for availability. We've never had a unplanned downtime in the five, six years that we've been around. We've never had a single minute of unplanned downtime. Now you compare all this and you compare to CVS and Walgreens and or startups who are trying the same thing, but they don't have their own system, right? They don't have control over the whole flow. And you can come to some judgment on how successful they're likely to be in being a delivery pharmacy, right? Remember, to be a delivery pharmacy, you need complete control of the whole operation. So it has to be under yours. I don't want to depend on anybody else to do my communications or uh, to do my insurance processing or to do my dispatch and delivery and tracking, analytics. I don't want to depend on anybody else. I want all of it in-house. That's what we have, right? Now, of course, this shows in the reviews for us uh, and Kerry has put, those, put that data out there, I know. Reviews for us versus reviews for competitors. Uh, you may or may not have heard about the White Coat Award that we got uh, 2021, which we hope to maintain for 2022, which is awarded for highest accuracy of uh, prescription handling within a pharmacy management system. Looking forward, uh, 
there are a bunch of uh, tasks or projects in flight, some landed, some in flight, to help operations. I, I tend to think of it operations first and then fancy. Purchase bot. We have a purchase bot in, uh, in production. Buying something, today literally it's like any other market in the US. You can buy the same medication for $10 from this wholesaler and $12 from that and eight from that. So who do you buy something from and when and how much of it do you buy? Can't leave it up to a human being to decide. They tend to make mistakes. They don't tend to look at unit pricing as well as a computer can. All right, so we have purchased bought in, in already in production and we're trying to make it into, or we're working on making it into a fully AI ML based Purchasing is not even a bot effectively, it's just an automated process that buys on behalf of locations from all uh, the vendors that we work with. We have a chat bot, which is near production. Now, chat bot is a, a lot of people talk about chat bot. We call it a chat bot, but we have some nuances around it. We are never going to send an automated response back up. An automated response in medicine field could lack the nuance of understanding somebody's question and we might give them a wrong answer or an incomplete answer. We're not going to do that. Our chatbot operates in the fashion that I showed you the communication where chats were coming in or texts were coming in. It would propose a response. Here's what the chatbot thinks this customer is talking about, including the context around it. And here's what we think we should reply with. And an operator can select yes, it'll go, or they could say no, in which case it's a negative signal. So it's a feedback loop for the ML project to say this response was not accepted by the operator, implying we need to look further. We have intelligent and optimal routing. I didn't show a lot more of the routing. Already it will do optimal routing. Right? If you select a bunch of things that I want to make these 10 stops, it will go from the pharmacy, find the optimal route and do that. We're going to do more work on it where <coughs> the system itself creates routes based on historical trends or neighborhood information, right? Uh, we do image analytics. I showed you a screen where a pharmacist can say, yeah, this is good to go. We're working on productionalizing a image analytics system where uh, the system will review the image of the medication which is being prepared and give a confidence score, yes, this is what the customer has needs or not. Right? Is this a wrong fill? Just to be a, a background check. We have plans on medication adherence, which is a big uh, part of healthcare system. We there is a system called Equip. Uh, there's a industry-wide standard called Equip. Uh, so you get an Equip score. We are a top 20% performing pharmacy in the country, which is the highest uh, tier there is. Uh, we uh, we think. Now that, that score encompasses male as well as retail pharmacies. We think if we were to be narrowed down to just retail pharmacies, we would be much higher bracket. I don't know what it is. I will try to find that information out. Uh, but all of this depends on quick fill doing the right thing and on us pouring more resources into making it better as we go along. Uh, I'm gonna stop. I think that was plenty uh, for now. Let me take a sip of water and we'll look through the questions. Okay, uh, a lot of questions. Let's see. Uh, can you talk about how you're building or have built your tech stack to manage the scale of networks? It's a, it's a distributed system, uh, redundant, uh, can be scaled up if you uh, if you know that term, as in you can add more CPU and memory to a, a given instance, I can scale out. So effectively, it has infinite uh, scale, and hence I was saying, you know, com confident that we can host the entire pharmacy system, pharmacy workload of, of the United States. Not a problem. Do you mind giving us insight into development process? I did some of them, sprint plans. We have two week sprint plans. I don't know what uh, cadence of updates two weeks for the moment. Uh, roadmap I'm gonna to hold to ourselves. I did tell you about some of the ML and AI stuff that we that is in the works, but there, there is a more refined roadmap around quick fill on how 
to expose more information to customers? So I mean, what are the facets of those that are that? Expose more immediate uh, information to the customer so they effectively know where things are and we can make them self-service if, if we can. And then there are internal operations-based improvements. Uh, more fine-grain tracking. Uh, we're looking at an example is we're looking at at an hourly level, any given location, how much work do they produce? Because we have seen sort of every now and then there are dips and different locations are operating slightly different uh, scale. Uh, so we're doing that. So quick fill improvements and customer facing improvements. How many locations are you planning on opening this year alone? I know this is a question, uh, this is largely a question for Kerry. Uh, I will leave it till the end, uh, Kerry can address it. Uh, Who's your biggest competitor? I'll leave that for Kerry. <laughs> I, I have the answers, but this is fine. We can, do you compete with Express Scripts? Express Scripts is a PBM. Uh, you can, yeah, I mean, in some sort of way, they are a competition, but we have to work with them. This is the a PBM, Express Scripts is one third of the PBM industry. So you don't fight with them. You work with them, but in some sense, you also compete with them for scripts. They would want to move scripts to their mail pharmacy. We, uh, and customers want them to be done. Smee, why don't, why don't I hit those two preceding questions real quick and turn it back over to you. So sure. uh, how many locations were opening this year alone? Uh, approximately 12. Will be 20 yeah. locations operational by end of 2022. That's the plan. Who's the biggest competitor at this time? Uh, depends what you call biggest. Amazon is in the pharmacy game, obviously a big company. Uh, but they're doing mail delivery through a company called pill pack that they acquired they're using legacy technology so i actually don't view them as really a direct competitor with what we're doing where we actually do free same day delivery often within a few hours uh capsule is uh raised a lot of money they're not much bigger than us they've just raised more money um, and wasted a lot of money as far as i can tell but uh they they certainly have a model similar to now or X, uh, they are targeting same day delivery for prescriptions. So I do consider Capsule direct competitor. Uh, a couple other players out there, Alto uh, Pharmacy in San Francisco is a little more focused on specialty medications, uh, fertility drugs and things like that. They're making some moves towards more mainstream pharmacy, but uh, they built most of that company doing really specialty kind of niche products. So again, I don't really view them as uh, a direct competitor as much as maybe a capsule capsule by the way is also using a legacy pharmacy technology called pharmacy rx and pioneer rx uh, i'm sorry pioneer rx pharmacy rx is a mckesson product uh pioneer rx um third-party software legacy technology been around for decades uh i i think of uh it this way legacy technology you're going to get legacy customer experience and you can see that in capsules yelp reviews just go look and compare that to now uh and you'll you'll see the difference that their their technology makes um i mean i don't know how you can call yourself a technology company going after pharmacy and you're using someone else's software to do every single process inside your pharmacy uh but that that's the state of affairs in the industry uh, the only company that's built a pharmacy management system is Alto. Uh, and again, they're more specialty focused, but at least they built some technology. And uh, they just had an announcement yesterday doing about $750 million in revenue uh, and raised $200 million. So they, they've done pretty well in the specialty market. Uh, and their Yelp reviews are, are really good. It reflects their, their technology. All right, you answered Express Scripts. I'll turn it back over to you, Sameet. Okay. All right. Uh... Where we go? One second, just catching up. Okay, we did that. CVS has offered uh, to deliver by repeat medications by mail. Absolutely, has existed for 20 years. If you want it, and so it'll come in two, three days. If that's the, if that satisfies your need, absolutely, that's the right thing. Uh, if you need something immediate, CVS does offer same day for $9, $8.99, and next day or two days out for $4.99, something like that. Our experience in the pharmacy industry is people are extremely price sensitive. They're going to be no takers for CVS to deliver something for nine bucks. It has to be free. 
we aren't doing free delivery for because the goodness of our heart this is what the business model requires uh what keeps them from duplicating the rx hopefully i gave you some view into what what kind of thinking is needed to deliver on the delivery pharmacy promise and what has to be built and I don't see CVS even making a business decision to do it. Forget about execution and implementation. I mean, the other thing about CVS and Walgreens, it's clear if you look at their strategy, they like the in-store pickup model, meaning bringing patients into a store, have them fill up their basket with a bunch of other things, waiting in line. Uh, and the reason I say that is there's a lot of evidence that backed me up. Uh, they have 20,000 stores across the United States. And CVS just recently announced something called uh, pharmacy uh, health hub, rather health hub at every pharmacy location where they're adding clinic services inside a pharmacy store. Now, that's not a company that is trying to get away from people coming into a store. That's a company looking for more ways to attract people into a store. Right. And Walgreens did the exact same thing with a company called Village MD that just they just acquired so those companies think people want to still come into stores we don't believe that we're going after patients that uh, are done with that old model and want to have a better patient experience better health outcome uh, and not have to go to a store and wait in line uh, can you talk about a bit about the apis narx has built i did uh touch upon it everything internally is api driven we can expose it we have exposed it to our internal uh, telehealth team and considering exposing it to others as well as uh, business uh, business makes sense uh, but it's not we're not I saw further down I scroll uh, but we're not true pill that is not what we're intending to do it you know the it, I could become a true pill if that's what we decided as a business uh, so we have that level of API if you know what that level of API is uh, but we have not exposed it because it is a business decision. Uh, so if we see an opportunity, and there are, there have been reach outs. We've, we've, we've had reach out from all the players you can imagine who are uh, true pill customers. And we have decided for one reason or the other not to pursue that. Uh, Mark Cuban cost plus drug company. Uh, great effort. I, I must applaud the effort. Uh, this is what we in the healthcare system need. 100 medications, generics available for cost plus three bucks, five bucks, three for the pharmacist plus five for shipping, eight bucks. Uh, but it's a great effort. It's a great start, but it doesn't move the needle just yet. It certainly doesn't change anything for us yet. 99, 95, some big, huge number of percent of people are in, paid through insurance uh, and want a single place to go get their medications. Now, good, what GoodRx is doing, this undercuts, I believe, what GoodRx is doing. Uh, GoodRx has inserted themselves as a middleman between customers and pharmacies because they're taking a cut in the middle. Class Plus takes that out as well, and they go directly and make it transparent. The people who are going to GoodRx should go to Mark Cuban Class Plus drug company. Uh, can you talk about how your team is secure, uh, is securing the data being collected? Uh, just as background, I spent five years at Experian, which is the credit bureau, which had data on every customer, every person in the United States, every loan, every car, student loan, home, whatever. Uh, and we had to go through rigorous uh, PCI audits and uh, security measures. So that's my background. I understand what it takes to secure data. Uh, there is compartmentalization. Engineering team has no access to production environments. There are DevOps, there are people who have access to production environments because every now and then you've got to go in there and do something. That access is limited to very few people and literally I have keys on the USB and Kerry has keys on the USB if we need it for redundancy and our DevOps team has the keys to get on the servers. Uh, secure by default, we it's set up that you can't get in. It's set up that the ports are blocked. It has uh, continuous audit reviews. 
we're working towards a high tech uh, certification. Uh, so we're aware of how these things happen. We personally don't, our marketing team has no access. No other team has access. Production system is production system. You're not going to have stuff like somebody looking into somebody else's medication in our system. Uh, I don't know what more I can say about that. A rough timeline on your own discount program. Uh, Carrie, you want to handle? We, we've talked internally, but we haven't pulled the trigger. We know how to do it. Yeah, I mean, the discount, uh, cash discount programs, basically, which is what GoodRx is, I mean, I give them credit for being uh, better on the marketing side. And frankly, they've sort of confused the market uh, to their own advantage. But, you know, cash discount cards have been around in the pharmacy industry for several decades. It, it doesn't apply for medications that are going through insurance. That's the bottom line. And the stat Sumit was searching for, it's 95% uh, of all medications are going through insurance. And so... 5% of the market, you can have a cash discount card. It can be helpful at times. There are some reasons for that because of some of the dysfunction in pharmacy. Um, and we do have that on the roadmap and uh, we'll roll it out, but it's 5% of the market. So we, we are focused on uh, the 95% of the market where we're really winning and getting a lot of traction and uh, it'll get added, but uh, you know it's not as high priority right now. Uh, goals of uh, multiple expansions in Q1, Kerry talked about. We, uh, we've already announced a few and a few more are coming. And let's, let's leave it at that. Uh, world temperature sensing medications require in-person receipt of RXs. Yes, we typically do require that. Our drivers would carry them in a temperature control pack uh, to the customer and we attempt, we coordinate, we attempt the coordination and we make sure they're going to be there. In very, very few, very few rare cases, there have been requests that, you know, I absolutely need you, but I absolutely can't be at home. Can you leave it? We'll leave the whole pack and some other, on the next route, we can go pick it up. Uh, this is not disposable packs. Uh, right, we're not trying, this environment to be taken care of. Uh, but the prescription that requires an art, I mean, I expect, I think you mean prior art. What percentage are approved within the first R? Hardly any. I don't think pri so prior art is a process where a pharmacy requests insurance company to say, hey, can you take a look? They already rejected it once, right? We ran it through insurance and they said, Psst. and so we request. So you have to send additional information and data to them saying, hey, you know, the doctor said this and this and this. And so now you're dependent on somebody else on their side reviewing that information. A human being is going to review that information uh, because you're telling them ICD codes and pro potentially uploading documents and stuff. So it's entirely out of pharmacy hand at that point until they reply back. I don't think things happen in R, but it's a good question I should find out. I don't have a metric for that, but we should, when we have the data, we'll be able to find out. Uh, what percentage in 24 hours? A lot does. A lot does get through it within 24 hours. Uh, how does Quickfill expedite this process? Uh, we integrated with Cover My Meds. It's an industry standard uh, service. Uh, but even within Cover My Meds, there are two levels of service integrations. We have done the higher level service integration straight into Quickfill. For our people, it's a, it's a single button to initiate a PA. With that single button, we send all the pertinent information that we have, right, over to Cover My Meds and on its way to the provider. And then we coordinate further with the provider. So, you know, I sort of uh, mentioned one that we have a provider direct communication channel. So we then communicate over that channel to the provider saying, hey, there's a PA uh, for your customer and, you know, it's likely this needs this, this, this information that I don't have. You can give me that information or you could go to Cover My Meds and do it. Uh, so we 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 make it very we make it trivial for our people to initiate the PA, right? That is a burden in itself. In a traditional system, you would leave your current workflow and you will go to callmymeds.com and manually type out that information and submit PA. That's look, people are lazy. That's a hurdle in itself, and the technician is likely to skip over that task or put it off. We make it trivial. You just click one button and the system takes care of it. 
that is one of the reasons I think we see a much higher throughput on our acceptance and initiation and acceptance of prior auth uh, with ours. And, and there's there. errors before you even get to prior auth. I mean, there are errors in communication with insurance companies. There are oftentimes things get a rejection code that's not really a rejection code if you know what you're doing and submitting the right uh, codes to the insurance company. And that's where our software does a lot of good in streamlining all of those potential error codes even before you get to a flat out rejection. A lot of those uh, adjudications will actually go right through. Uh, and we actually have representatives from pharma companies coming to us and knocking on our doors and saying, I don't understand, like every time a doctor sends a prescription to you guys, it goes through. And when we send it to the CVS, it doesn't go through. And so, you know, the pharma companies are getting angry because they can't get their products in the patient's hands and they should be, uh, and patients are getting frustrated. So even before you get the prior offs, there's a whole host of reasons why a medication can get rejected and cause a service failure. Uh, you gotta be good at both. You gotta be good at the prior off process, but you gotta be good before it even gets to that. Uh, would you consider Trupil uh, a competitor? I mentioned what Trupil, I understand what Trupil does. We have made a conscious decision not to change that market. We could do what Trupil does. We have the backend and the API and the pharmacy services. Trupil will put it in the mail. I can put it in the mail. Trupil cannot do what we do. We deliver same day. You need a delivery fleet and team to deliver same day. Trupil doesn't do that. Yeah, and let me let me say a little more about Trupil. All right, they 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 came to they came to fame by being the back end pharmacy for companies like Hims and Romans, right? So these companies, you've all seen them on TV. They're attracting direct to consumer traffic. Uh, they're getting them to sign up online and for things like erectile dysfunction, right? ED medication. Now, uh, Hims and Romans charges $20 a month for 10 pills, and they add another $10 for uh, the initial consult. So it's $30 for 10 pills. And the reality is, with all the discount cards that are available and the cash pricing, uh, those pills should cost about a third of that. And in fact, if you go to the NowRx website, uh, you can get ED uh, for 10 bucks a month and you'll get your 10 pills, so a buck a pill. Um, and so what you see in Hims and Romans, and if you talk to people, and I have talked to people that are inside those companies and have looked at their financials, they have massive churn. All of their customers are signing up, they're good at marketing, and all those customers are realizing they can get it cheaper elsewhere. And uh, it's massive churn beyond that. So True Pills had a good living uh, being the fulfillment center uh, for a price, for a fixed fee for those companies. But now those two companies, in addition to having massive churn, they're moving towards their own fulfillment pharmacy. They've already announced this publicly. Uh, they're building out their own uh, mail order pharmacies. Um, if I'm True Pill or an investor in True Pill, I'd be uh, more than a little concerned with the future of my market. Okay. Uh, is what have you built and worked on before now, Rex? Okay. Uh, I graduated engineering school, computer science, 95. So that's 27 years. I started out programming uh, very early in the days. I got interested in databases. I think database is a phenomenal piece of technology. It's a core piece of technology besides OS. OS and databases make the make everything run. Uh, I got more and more interested in databases, including when, you know, gotten into the internal of the databases. I've worked on the internal of Postgres and My, uh, MySQL. Then data warehouses. Uh, I built a lot of line of business applications in banking, in transportation, uh, credit bureau. Uh, just prior to now, Rex, Kerry and I were together uh, at a company called GenieDB, which was a distributed database in the cloud. I think we were too early to the game uh, and didn't, didn't have the right uh, enough resources as well. So hence we've uh, wound it down after working at it for three, four years. Prior to that, I've worked at X1, which is a desktop search company. So I've had wide ranging experience. Now what it, it sort of rolls into the next one as well. 
when I started early in the career in my career in 1995, EDI used to rule the day, and soon after was XML and now JSON and so on, right? The healthcare industry, though, is uh, is sort of built over EDI XML age of technologies. The interaction with short scripts, I told you, the e-script thing is over XML. The interaction with the insurance company, which is the insurance processing, is over EDI. That's what a generation earlier, right? So I think my experience over the time, the database kind of experience and analytics and warehouse and then the line of business just happened. I think it wasn't planned, but I think I can leverage my entire 27 years of experience into now and have been doing it. Of course, along the way, I was a pure engineer. I didn't used to think about business at all. I just wanted to write code. Uh, along the way, I, I become wiser, I would imagine, and you know, with more white hair. Uh, uh, and so I also look at it as operations and strategic, what true value tech can deliver to operations. I don't want to write something which is for just tech's sake. I'm not going to try the most recent framework of the week. Uh, our stuff is stable as hell because it is written on stable technology that is not changing underneath our feet. I don't want that thing to change. I want to change business, not technical problems. I, I, I will leverage every technology that I understand, know, or want to learn, but I don't want to write net new frameworks back end, front end, mobile to run my business. I want to use what is what is stable. So that's the way I think about it and what I bring to now, Rice. I think that's a great place to end it, Sumit. And I've got a hard stop yeah. coming up. Uh, there's a lot of great questions. I'm really pleased with the interactions and the, the interest we generated. So maybe we'll do another tech talk uh, in a couple of weeks. And uh, any question we didn't get to, we will put it out on the forum that lives on seedinvest.com. So we're in the middle of a crowdfunding raise right now uh, at seedinvest.com slash nowrx. And there's a uh, communication forum there, comment forum. I'm quite active on that. Sumit is as well. We'll post all the questions we didn't get to today on that forum with answers and any other questions that come up along the way, go out in the forum. Uh, and ask away and we'll give you a response and, uh, you know, love to have the dialogue and the feedback. So uh, thanks everyone very much for joining and having such great uh, questions and uh, you know, certainly uh, give us some feedback. Uh, if you want to see more talks like this, we'll, we'll try to make that happen. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great rest of your day and a good weekend. Thanks guys.